CNT 125, Chapter 7. We're continuing our discussion on network architecture. So the next topic they have is a little bit about our design structure, if you will, hierarchical design. Um, so different manufacturers, Cisco and other manufacturers, have developed a um, kind of like a model, a structure for routers and switches in a network called a three-tiered architecture uh, that includes access, distribution, and core layers. Um, if we take a look here, here is the typical design. We have the access layer, distribution layer, core layer. Um, the access layer is where typically your layer two switches kind of thing are that workstations are plugging into, IP phones are plugging into, uh, access points are plugging into. And this is where the users are getting access to the network. Okay, I'm going to zoom back up here real quick. Um, this is your workgroup switches connected directly to the host. This is where your devices are getting access to the network, hence the access layer. Um, if you were to go to like a Cisco website and buy a switch, a lot of times they're grouped into, hey, these are access layer switches, these are distribution uh, switches, or these are or these are core routers or core switches. So you'll see these names pop up from time to time. That's why they're pointing them out. Uh, the next layer they talk about is the distribution. Uh, this is your mesh uh, between multi-layer switches and routers. A lot of times this is your layer 3 switches or layer 4 switches connecting together. So you might actually have here, these might be switches scattered around a couple closets in a building. Um, and then these are some distribution switches are for that building connecting to another building. Or one part of campus to another part of campus kind of thing. Just to get your kind of head wrapped around what you're seeing there. And these might be layer 3 or layer 4 switches um, as we looked at earlier earlier that are designed to do a little bit of traffic um, interpretation, a little bit of traffic maybe filtering this 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 application or this port I should say. Uh, this port number traffic is allowed through, this port number traffic is not allowed through. That might be what's going on. But as you see here there's redundant links. Um, there's on your switches, you have more than one uh, uplink port. Uh, that switch is probably connected to two switches for redundant purposes. Okay, that's what they mean here with the highly redundant. The core layer, um, this might be, again, if you had layer 3 there to distribution layer, this might be a layer 4 switch up there. It's your core layer. Um, or this might actually be a router up here that's there for backbone traffic. It's The main thing there is for backbone traffic. Uh, moving traffic maybe from this entire building to this entire building over here, or this part of campus here to this part of campus here, or maybe even this site to this site, if you will. Uh, you know, the Harrisburg office over to the Mechanicsburg office kind of thing. That sort of thing. Uh, that is typical network uh, structure that uh, was was this kind of like the model for how we implement our devices and hook things up. The other thing they mentioned back here is this whole east-west traffic, north-south traffic. East-west was, uh, you know, between peers within like the access layer, if you will. Meanwhile, the north-south traffic is going up through the layers, okay? They mention that because... As we've developed newer technologies, virtualization, software-defined network, cloud computing, which we're going to be talking about as the as the chapter moves on here, um, this this hierarchical design that was in place uh, was doing some limiting of traffic. There was getting some latency between devices. So a newer technology, um, a, a spine and leaf topology, if you will, uh, was designed to try to minimize that, uh, trying to Keep the redundancy and scalability, but to decrease this latency. Um, and also with that, reducing a little bit of cost to things. So what happened here, here's your spine and leaf. Uh, if you look up here, the core and distribution kind of got collapsed together, if you will. And really your core functions are out here. So if you look, this might be, again, these might be the switches on... Uh, one floor, one part of the building, one floor, one part of the building. And these ones over here are separate for uh, having traffic move from here out. Okay, so it kind of almost like whew, around that flow right here. So this core and distribution up here is getting collapsed. Uh, so this is now your spine layer, spine and leaf. Uh, so you might see that as your design where um, those upper, the core and distribution layers got squished together to make the, dis the spine. So keep those in mind as, as uh, network design models, if you will. This leads us to software-defined networking. Software-defined networking 
we're now going to use a controller that's going to do a lot of the decision making for the devices. Um, so here, with a traditional network, you would have a switch, you'd have a router, you'd have maybe a virtual switch, and each one of them has their own processing and their own um, you know, tables of information, their own decision making being done. And you would literally need to connect into this one and do some programming, connect into this one, do some programming, connect into this one to do some programming. Um, so they all kind of operated on their own. With software defined networking, you're taking this upper layer, this control layer, and removing that and having these switches and routers act as like nodes working on your behalf and you can put the control in here of like well i need this to occur i'm controlling in one area and these carry out your instructions for you um, so this is this is a newer approach to networking software defined networking you find this especially when we start getting into uh, cloud computing where you have some virtual switches and everything this is built into that or this is in there with that so um, I, I can show you here this with your software defined networking. I'm moving some of this control. Um, actually, I'll do one more out here. I'm moving some of the control away from the devices into a software defined networking controller. I put all my controls and commands in here, and then these devices receive their commands from that to know how they function. How do they work? Okay, so move back here. Um, so your software defined networking uh, into different layers or planes. You have the infrastructure plane, control plane, application plane, management plane. Um, the infrastructure plane called the data plane. Um, this is where your physical and virtual devices are. So if I go back here to this one, this is right here. This is where the devices are. Okay, this is where the devices are. Uh, the next layer control, this is where the decision making handles or is handled. So if I go back here to the traditional model, you see the control plane is with that device. That's the tables and control information that you program into each one of those. As I move to software defined networking, you see that control plane is being moved off into a controller, um, moved off to a controller that's going to do that for these devices. So you kind of have like that centralized management, if you will. Um, the application uh, plane is where the controller is going to communicate with things like servers. Let me jump over to this one. Here's your servers here, um, and the controller is communicating with it. I'm like, hey, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And then last but not least, the management plane. Um, this can be kind of considered part of the control plane, but the management plane is where the the admin is going to manage these devices. And if I, I move it out here to this one, you can see that you're using, you know, SSH, that sort of thing to uh, manage your devices, even SNMP to manage your devices. Okay. That's your software defined network. And you'll find that in uh, a lot of networks are evolving to that, especially when you do some virtual cloud things, you might actually have some uh, with your virtual structure, you might actually have virtual switches in there and virtual firewalls in there uh, that you're using that are software based devices instead of hardware based devices. Um, they also mention a storage area network um, with our virtual structure, if you will. Um, storage area network is just that. It's a network of storage devices designed for fast saving and retrieval of information, if you will. So here is a network attached storage unit. This is basically a uh, storage unit on a given network. And this might just be a uh, unit with multiple hard drives in that you're storing data on. Some of us even have those in our house. Meanwhile, a storage area network is literally a separate network of storage devices that your network connects to. Um, so there's one sample I have there, and I have other ones as we go along. Um, they are not only extremely fault tolerant, but also very fast. So there's a couple different technologies that can get used for storage area networks. Fiber channel, uh, fiber channel over Ethernet, iSCSI, and AffiniBand. And they all have kind of their own little pros and cons. So your storage uh, fiber channel storage network runs separately from Ethernet. Um, this can run over copper, but typically fiber is used. It does require special hardware. Um, it can be expensive for these special devices, but here would be a fiber channel network. So here's your regular ethernet network. Um, and now I have a series of fiber channel switches and fiber channel like 
interfaces to your storage devices um, that I would use. And as, as I save data to my controller, my file server here, um, this might actually send it to multiple devices uh, on my network for storage purposes. And, and you'll find this where you have a lot of data storage. And I pick on places like hospitals and medical centers and so forth, where you have tons of storage you're going to do, but you need to retrieve quickly. Uh, fiber channel over Ethernet. Uh, again, I can use uh, uh, Ethernet hardware, and this is going to encapsulate. It's going to encapsulate um, this this fiber channel in an Ethernet frame. So I'm using a lot of the same hardware, but I can do, or I should say, it's, it's a lot of the same function, but I can use some Ethernet hardware, and I don't need to have special fiber channel uh, interfaces. I can have my Ethernet connect right into some of these. iSCSI. Um, a lot of you might recognize SCSI from hard drive. Um, iSCSI, it, it, this, this kind of developed from that, from the, the SCSI uh, hard drive interfaces, allowing for fast transport and fast communication. So I literally just have my regular um, LAN switch, and then I have my iSCSI equipment off here that I'm storing to. And then last but not least was the InfiniBand. Um, and this one is uh, specialized hardware, very fast, but it's kind of a niche market thing. Um, so you have specialized InfiniBand uh, switches and equipment to do this. Um, all part of storage area networks. And you might find those in, again, I like to pick on, you know, health med centers, that sort of thing, where you have a ton of data you need to save and retrieve frequently. So just keep these in the back of your mind as uh, uh, parts of networks, parts of networks that you might see.